feeling like the best. Notre Dame, Florida, CBS. But today, family, Nobody I got a very this. special guest. My good friend, Notre Dame teammate, a guy of many, many talents himself. I mean, the guy is the most interesting man I think I know next to maybe, you know, Gandhi. <laughs> I'm talking big <laughs> scale. But we got my guy, DeBars Daniels, in the building. <laughs> What's good, bro? Man, thanks for coming to the podcast, man. Okay, I'm going to jump right into it. Canadian superstar for football, man. We talking about, did you imagine Vernon Hills? Vernon Hills, did you know you was going to be living next to Drake in Toronto? Maple syrup being your favorite condiment and being a international Canadian football star. Did you know that in Vernon Hills growing up? Honestly, man, I thought I was going to be a basketball player before I came over here, so I I really didn't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I had some things happen, bro. I ended up, you know, being up here. I never thought I'd be in Canada. I ended up in Calgary. I didn't even know where Calgary was. I thought it was in Europe somewhere. <laughs> um, but uh, it all worked out, man. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be where I am, and I'm blessed to be up here. So describe what's uncommon about being a a, a, college, a a Canadian football star compared to how the NFL stars are perceived today. Like I feel like it's a, it's a different world you're living in when you're playing to that type type of game. So it's 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 real different up here because football is not the number one sport. It's like the third fourth sport. So you don't get the crowds that you got in college. You know we went to a big time college at Notre Dame. So you. You go from having 85, 90,000 at the game, 10,000 sitting outside in the car waiting for you to come out, and you come here, you got maybe 15, 20,000 people in the stands, and that's that's considered a big game. So um, it was different for sure. I uh, definitely thought it would be much different. I definitely thought I'd be other places, but um, you know, you learn to love it. It's a different game. It's, it's a lot of different rules and, and, and the field is bigger. The field is wider. It's it's, it's a different type of football. <laughs> Why should and people tune in, though? I mean, you know, this is this is unusual. What you grew up loving, and your, your dad even played in the NFL. And and yeah. what was the common adjustments? I mean, the ball is even different. The ball is a little bit bigger. Um, you get a running start. It's kind of like arena football plus the professional game at the same time. You get a, a mix of both. Um, you got a lot of Canadian rules that you have to understand. It's three downs instead of four downs. Um, it's 12 people on the field. It's not 11. Um, so that, that change defenses up dramatically. Um, it's much harder for a quarterback to come up here. You've seen a lot of quarterbacks come up here, Manziel, everybody. And they, they kind of struggle because it's, it's a totally different game. Um, <laughs> but it's a receiver game, and, you know, that's, that's what I do. So that's, I mean, I'm happy to be up here. It's actually kind of fun. Yeah, like you said, it's kind of fun, but it's different. And you, you're playing with different rules. Like, even the talent level is different. Now, for Americans, what most people don't know is that when an American football player goes up to the Canadian Football League, it's a little different in terms of how the, the process is. It's not always about being the best. You got to kind of find your right place at the right time. And, and just and take me through kind of how the American football player has so, so much success like you have. Um, it's tough, man. I think that you, me, I've been up, this, I'm going into my fifth year and I've seen a lot of Heisman Trophy winners, people that were up for the Heisman come up here and not be successful. It's just a different game. And, um, I think that you have to learn to appreciate that and learn to adjust. And I think a lot of people have a hard time adjusting to, you know, the different intricacies of the, the sport. And, um, you know, it's it's weird to see, but like for the ones that you know have good work ethic, good work ethic, and uh, they put apply themselves every day, that's just what happens. You start to you know have a little success, and it it, does, it might not come right away, but you got to keep pushing. And for me, you know, my rookie year, I sat eleven games or ten games before I started playing, and ended up winning <laughs> rookie of the year. So like it's, you know, I mean, you got to be patient. It's a, it's a totally different game. It's a hard adjustment, but you got to just keep fighting. Yeah, exactly. And like that transition where you're a superstar in American football from the college. I mean, he was a five-star receiver, college offers all over the wazoo, a lot of hot hype coming into college. But when you get to the Canadian League, it's, it's sort of like not only starting over, 
but it's like you almost feel disrespected. Like they're not appreciating the skills that you that you've been putting in all this time. Like they almost don't even know who you are. Right. And it, you know, it's crazy because people get overlooked all the time. And you know, it's a lot of people up here that deserve to be in the NFL. And um, you know, they just you can only have 50, 52 people on the roster. So it's it's you know, it's it's hard to come by. Um you know, it gave me another outlet to keep playing the, the game I love and to keep pursuing a dream that I had as a little kid. So um, a lot of people try to take advantage of that and, you know, just keep playing and see what happens. And I've had multiple opportunities to come back down there um, for whatever reason they don't work out. So it's, you know, it's, it's cool to be, you know, established up here and have like that, that second, you know, path I can take and, you know, be, you know, somebody, in another country, is that, is that in another true? country? How do the fans? <laughs> how do the fans rock with you? Is it a different type of love? Do you sign like their maple syrup bottles, or like how does the interaction compare to Notre Dame fans? Because we know how that goes. But I'm I'm sure Canadian yeah. fans approach you a little differently. Not like a hockey player, I'm assuming. No, not like a hockey player. But um, it's, it's more honestly, it's more genuine up here. You know, in college, they they love you till you mess up. And it, up here, it's like they're genuinely nice people outside of football, and uh, mm. you know they don't they don't view you as a football player. Like I said, it's like the third or fourth sport up here, so it's kind of <laughs> third a little or different. fourth. <laughs> it's a little different. So um, you know they 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 appreciate you as a person, so they they kind of approach you differently. Um, I've signed a lot of babies. Like they they, <laughs> they just they they really like are nice people. Like they don't have like no nothing no bad will no no issues with you they just assume that you also are a good person so um i signed a lot of babies um <laughs> i signed a lot of foreheads a lot of hats like it's 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 crazy man I, I love it for real now as an athlete how much do you appreciate just that embrace where they make you feel like you're a regular person as opposed to notre dame you you have a platform but just college football in general you have a platform where people feel like you're almost unreachable or, or not the same. You don't go through the same problems as everybody else does. Yeah. Um, being on that stage is, and being on TV all the time and, and people seeing you um, from that, from that stream, it's like, they put you on the platform, they put you on a pedestal. And then when they meet you in person, it's like, Oh my God. And it's like, you have to pretend like you don't hear that. Like you have to pretend like you don't, you don't see yourself as a different person, but like you know to them that you they don't see you as a normal person. And um, up here is just way, way different, man. It's it's just people being people, understanding. Okay, he plays sports, but like he, we know that he's a person. You know, what I mean, he plays for my favorite team, but he's, you know, what I mean, I want to have a conversation with him. I don't even need his autograph. Type thing. It's it's, it's cool. It's different. Um, you know, I do I do miss the other side a little bit. <laughs> Just the perks that came with it, the but yeah, uh, with you know, it. it's cool. And it, and I'm telling you that life is looking a lot better for you from the last time I remember. You know, when we was at Notre Dame and you was going through so much. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that side of things where you know the Canadian fans may know you as Devaris Daniels catching touchdowns left and right, but I met you at a different time. And and during yeah. that time, it was a lot going on. And I think this is just the time to talk about that. Uh yeah, I mean, it's uh it's something I ain't talked about in a long time. Actually, um, it was um, I got suspended heading into my senior year, and it was you know I mean stuff happened whatever, and in that moment I had everything taken away from me. So like it was football was over. I didn't know if you know, I would play again. Um, it was a lot of uncertainty, and uh, you know you. As a person, you start to – you had one dream in life. My dad played in the NFL. I had NFL potential. You know, I was hearing all the stuff. Um, had good, you know, good ranking going into my senior year. So, I'm I'm excited for what's about to happen. And whatever, you know, transpired, it came to a halt. And, you know, from there, it was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I, I don't – I'm young, I'm in college, I don't have like, I'm not finished with school. I don't have like another path to go down. I put all my chips into going in the, 
the NFL. And, you know, they they did what they did, and I was suspended, and I never played enough down in Notre Dame, and I thought for sure it was over with. I didn't get drafted. Um, I had a bunch of workouts, and none of them panned out. And I got a call from – Calgary and they said they had my rights I'm like how you my rights like, what does that mean <laughs> and uh they was like know. well we right they have like a little secret draft for for Americans that Americans don't even know about just in case they want to come up here so then I get a call from them like okay cool I'll try it out maybe it's another opportunity I can get you know play like a year or two and go back to the NFL put some good film out there because I haven't played in, in a year and a half and um you know, I did that, ended up winning, you know, some awards, and I thought I was back on track. And for whatever reason, you know, it just it just never worked out. But, um, I, you know, I made a big, big bounce back. I tell you, I know you know everything <laughs> that happened. But, yeah, it was a and big, you, big And you fell off the map. Like, that that time, like, you fell off. Even nobody really knew what was going on. And that's what I really right. wanted to in that in that perspective of – that, uh, that adversity that you faced was so uncommon to the point where it was like nobody has ever experienced that before from a from so, how you handled it, how how you were getting told that. So what was the life, life lessons or the things that you learned when you were going through it? Because it was so different. It was tough. Um, honestly, it was, you know, when, when, it, when things went down, the first thing you saw was your name on ESPN ticker at the bottom. <laughs> And it was like, this just happened 10 minutes ago. Like, how y'all already know about the story? Then um, I get a call from my high school football coach. He tell me it's, it's news choppers, it's news cameras and stuff at the football practice. I'm like, bro, they acting like I done, like, killed somebody. <laughs> and they blew like, it up. Blew it. Yeah, you know I mean, like, nobody knew what it, what it was. And nobody then, knew. Nobody knew anything. My mom calling and telling me it, it's cameras outside the house, like, and for me, like, as a young person, like, you never want to make your family look bad. So now you got cameras and stuff outside of your house. It's like, man, what is going on? Like, so, I mean, for me, that just kind of put in perspective of how big not only Notre Dame was, but, like, how big I was in that moment. Like, it was – People care about you. Knew, I never knew. I never knew that, you know, I was that big. I knew that I had talent. I knew that I, you know, could play and wanted to play and wanted to get better and all this stuff. But I never knew in that moment how big I already was. So it was, it was a shock to see, but like just that having to go through that with my family and that adversity, man, I think that it changed my life for sure. That transition, man, that's, it's almost like when you hit the, the bottom of the bottom, the only way you can do is go up. And, and what did you learn about yourself? Like, let's just talk about divorce and stuff. Cause we call you two, you go by many yeah. different names, but what did you learn about yourself going through that meteoric rise? I mean, you went from, you know, the top of college football, you hit the hit the pitfalls, and the meteoric rise, what did you learn? You was like, man, I'm really uncommon. I can do this. <laughs> um, just, I think, to make it through that, because like you said, man, it was really rock bottom. I, I've never been that sad in my life, never had to deal with that kind of outside adversity in my life. Um, like I said, you really would have thought that I had like did some harm to some other person, but um, with everything that was going on and um, it was just, it just wasn't a good time at all, but to bounce back from it, to persevere, to, to find a way to make it work, to find a way to, you know, get back to some kind of, you know, place where I felt like I was somebody again even though like I lost like I lost like in that time I lost like 15,000 followers on Twitter when Twitter was in play like, I went from being somebody to nobody at all so like to bounce back and to become somebody again in a sense you know what I mean somewhere like that was that was the biggest thing for me and it didn't take it wasn't like an overnight thing like I was supposed to be suspended for a week two weeks Nothing was said or heard for three months, and it's like uh, my whole season is gone. Now I got to go to the NFL because y'all not even allowing me to come back to school. I don't even get a chance to like go through that. 
yeah. work out, go to, I, get, I got invited to the combine, which was two and a half, three weeks later. And I've just been chilling, waiting on y'all to tell me what I, what my options are. Yeah, it was like, yeah, you're going to come back, you're going to be here. I ain't, been, <laughs> I ain't been working out. I ain't been doing nothing. Like, I've just been waiting for y'all to tell me, okay, I can come back to school next summer for my fifth year and finish out school and do all this stuff. But y'all y'all didn't give me that option. And then when y'all gave me the information, it was already too late. So, like, you know, I was forced into I was forced into a bunch of situations that I didn't want to be in. And just to be able to bounce back from it and, and become something is it was big for me. And I think that that's that's really what I learned about myself is that perseverance is everywhere. You really that guy. That's really what that's really what it comes down to. It's only only guys who are, are him can really get to it. <laughs> and I think you proved that to yourself. You proved it to Everybody that was watching, because it was down bad at the sense, because nobody knew I was on the team. I'm like, we missing all our best players. It's, it's, it's bad, bro. Right? And a lot of people, a lot of people didn't really, you know, recover from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, a lot of people not, they still not, they're not playing anymore. And, uh, you know, that's what it is, what it is. And they found, they had to find other avenues. But, like, for me, I had a dream, so I'm, I'm going to stick to it until it's over with. But now, you know, Things are good, so I'm I'm chilling. And that's definitely right. Things are good, and they're looking up for your sports career. But now, how things have transpired, being in quarantine, being rough with no haircut, sports is kind of taking a pause. Yeah, sports is definitely kind of taking a pause. And how is now realizing that sports is on pause and everything is on a halt, and you're seeing everything around the country kind of unfold, how do you view the world in a different perspective now that you can't be focused on sports as much as you were before as a black man um, yeah and for me uh sports sports kind of started to come down a little bit when i had my son and you, i realized like you know i, I gotta worry about him first and foremost his family over everything and just to have that mindset it kind of put in perspective of what's really going on in the world right now as a culture as a people you know, we've been down, we've been down, we've been out for hundreds of years. And to now see like other races and people coming in and chiming in and trying to, you know, come to our backup, it's nice to see. But um, I think it's, it's still hard to understand for those people because like, it's, it's one of those situations, racism is one of them situations you don't understand until like, unless you're in it. And me, I grew up in, in Georgia and I moved to Chicago, two, two very different places. So, you know, you ride into my hometown in Georgia, you see hanging up a big American flag and right next to it, a big old Confederate flag. So it's like knowing the history between the two races at an early age, it's like, I already feel some kind of feelings toward these people. I will be respectful in everything, but I feel some type of way. Um, it's a fear, it's an anger. It's like, why are y'all treating us like this? We the same as y'all type type thing. This is at a young age. You grow up, you hear all the stories, all the people getting killed by cops, white cops at that. Like, it's like, well, this is what I, I knew growing up. But I moved to Chicago and it's not like that. It's like, everybody's the same. Like, we're we not the same. Everybody knows we're not the same, but there's a respect level. There's, there's something there that keeps us cordial. Mm -hmm. communicating all that whereas in the south it's not like that so i'm i'm looking at what's happening in the world man it's like i understand why people are so frustrated i understand why they are doing the things that they are doing not saying that i agree with everything but like i understand why they're doing it whereas people up here in canada like they would never understand they would <laughs> never understand they have no understanding they have no emotional connection to that. You know what I mean? To to racism and how like strong it is in America. It's, it's just the leading topic in America. It's been for years. Nobody likes to talk about it, but it's time to talk about it. And now that it's here, it's like everybody's trying, everybody up here is trying to understand it and they can't because they don't connect to it on an emotional level. Um, it's crazy, man. It's like I remember driving behind a car in Georgia and being and seeing a Confederate, 
you know, license plate. And it's like, I know that these people don't know me. I don't know them. I just hope that they don't see me because I don't know what they're going to do. Oh. And it's the same thing when you think about, you know, police. It's like you don't know how many of those type of people are in and I, I mean, obviously, I feel like we've come a long way. There's, there's a lot of, a lot less of that. But the ones that are still in there, they're still in there. You gotta like believe segregation and stuff was 60 years ago. Like these people were just growing up, and and being taught by those people that put segregation in place. So like, there's still there's still bad eggs out there in the world, and they, especially in every force, not just police, but. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's just, it's time to to eradicate all that and get rid of it, man. It's just it's not a good look. We're supposed to be the best country in the world, but we got our own problems and we can't even get over them. Like we got a president that, that's trying to keep them in place too. So it's like, how do you really vocalize yourself? You don't protest the silence. You, know, you had the Kaepernicks. You had the people going on the the sports award shows and talking about it, and it's all black people. Yeah, now it's like we have to make this a message. Like we have to, we have to show them what we feel. And you see these fires burning, bro. That's how we feel inside. Like that's that's this is prolonged. This is built up. That's how we feel inside. You're seeing how we feel. So like you have to respect it. You won't have to agree with it, but you got you definitely got to suspend your judgment a little bit because you don't know that anger that's been built up over these years. Seems like the same things keep happening all the time. So it, I, it's time for like the world to wake up and see and try to help us out and figure out how we can be equal to everybody else and, and move forward. Now, as an athlete, with with that being said, which is so true, we got to find a way to come together. We got to find a way ourselves to to strategize ways to best solve the issue. Because at the end of the day, when you don't handle something it's only going to continue to get worse. If I avoid picking up the phone from Sprint calling me every day by paying my phone bill, it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. I pick up the phone and, and handle it. So it just shows that we need to unite as a unit. And that's where it talks about being uncommon. With the platform that you have as an athlete, being in two different countries, what is your approach to, to, to taking this step as a black man and making it aware that this is an issue that needs to be solved and, and your part in in uh, approaching solving. <clears throat> um, for me, I think that the main thing that I can do right now, because I'm not in America, is just to spread the knowledge to these people that are unaware. Um, for me, I think I'm probably one of the best people to do that because, like I said, I I was raised in Georgia, but I grew up in Chicago. I got to see both sides. You know, what I mean, I got to see both sides so I can help people connect to it in a way that they don't really understand while, you know, being civil and, and talking about, you know, these regular emotions that you think that should be going on about protests and your views of protests and, and nonviolence. And it's like, I can, I can help you understand why they are doing it. I'm not saying you have to agree. I'm not saying that I personally agree, but if I put myself in their shoes, if I was in Georgia right now, I would be out in them streets and I would be, I would feel that, that, that whatever I felt as a kid when I saw that Confederate flag hanging, I would feel that again if I was down there. Mm -hmm. So I can help explain that to you. I can help you understand and help you not place judgment on, on the things that are happening because our people have tried everything for years. They've tried everything. Everything that you're telling them to do right now and that you're upset about them doing right now, they they haven't done that before. They've tried other ways. So, you know what I mean? I think I'll have to be like the voice of reason and just explaining to people why people are acting the way that they're acting and how you have to just hold off on your judgment because this is something emotionally, like you cannot understand that feeling at all. Now, as a black man, you're right. They, they, they can't understand. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the end game in this? Do you see that maybe separation is key? Maybe us doing something on our own and being on our own is the best way because like we've tried to integrate. You know, we've tried to try to work with you, tried to do things how you guys want us to do this, that, that you say work, work the best way. 
but it's proven yeah. time and time again in 2020, we burning down police stations. So how do you yeah. see the end game in this? And where do you see us as a, as a culture, as a people taking that step to not only protecting ourselves, but making a better way for ourselves? Um, I think that it comes from people of other races have to take a step back in this moment. And it's like, we have to be, for the first time ever, we have to lead. We have to be leaders. And you can follow us, you can be behind us, you can you know, rally with us, protest with us, but you have to let us lead this one. Cause like, we know what's going on. Y'all y'all are tagging on, y'all y'all are starting to wake up and see what's going on. But this is this one thing that we have to lead. I don't think that we have to go our own ways. I think that it's so good to see like Seth Rogen and all these uh, Steve Kerr and all these, you know, white people get in on it and speak up about it and, and, and do all these things. But, you know, we, we also need more, um, you know, it's, it's to me, it's, this is the perfect time for us to like revolutionize what we are as a country by all coming together. And yes, we're different. Like it seems that we're so separated right now, but I'm watching all these videos and I'm watching these fires and people looting stuff, but like, we not the only ones in there. That's the thing. We not like we all are together. And that's even just that is a step in the right direction. Cause before it was just us. You know what I mean? Now it's, it's a combination of everybody. So, I mean, I think that just helping people understand and, you know, continue to educate people on the struggle of it itself civilly, which a lot of a lot of us are doing is just you know, civilly, peacefully protesting like what it is. And you have to just spread that knowledge and help them understand and just let us take the lead this one time on this one situation. And then from there, we can grow together. That's absolutely right, man. I think it's, it's taking those steps and, and really you got to find a way to come together, but it really starts with self. I feel like this story is no different than the adversity that you went through at Notre Dame where there was a lot of things that you really couldn't control. You know, there was, there was a lot of factors that played into your situation that had you feeling like, okay, I can't just sit here and wait forever. I got to be proactive in my own sense. I got to get something done in my own sense to, to at least get that confidence back. It was all about getting that pride, that confidence back to take action for yourself. And, and now you translate it into this where so much is going on, these riots, these people going crazy, and, and it's really fighting for what's right, you know? And I think at the end of the day, change isn't gonna happen until you start it from within. I mean, you've experienced that yourself. I mean, you had something hit you like a tidal wave, but you still like a rock, man. And, it's, and you was able to fight through that and it's still happening today, even to right now. Yeah, for sure, bro. I think that just, we've been broken down to our core right now and Perseverance, like I said, is everything. It's not going to happen tonight. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next week. But you got to keep making these little steps before you can you can take these big runs. And um, I think that we, as much as it seems like we now, I think we headed in the, in the right direction with everybody coming together and everybody finding their voice and finding their their tune to, to go out and say something. You, know, you got all these stars starting to say something and that wouldn't have said anything before. And it's like people finally realizing, you know, what they are and who they are and using that to their advantage and trying to make change is, is, is great. Exactly, it's trying to make change, man. Everything keeps evolving. There's nothing that ever stays the same. We both know that and understand that to its fullest. Now, when this fullest. is over and when, this, when we get past this moment and we go back to sports, how do you want to see sports after all of this is going over, how do you visualize how you're going to approach it? What are the, the things that's going through your mind when sports does come back? Um, see, that's that's a good question because honestly, sports I don't even really know about right now because <laughs> with all this going on, you forget about you know COVID nineteen, you forget about coronavirus, all that stuff still being out there, and all these rules and on travel and all this stuff still going on. So like that's that's like. That's so far removed from my mind right now, but 
Um, you know, I just hope that, you know, we can continue to have sports be a pillar for bringing people together. Um, you know, like it's been, uh, I think we should look at it differently now because a lot of these people are stepping out of their, their grounds. You got LeBron stepping out of just playing basketball and saying stuff. You got a lot of these athletes stepping out of their sport and saying stuff and realizing that they, they're people too. I think the biggest example of that was um, with Stack. Um, yeah, Stack came on. That Stack came on and said some stuff. He got Cat who just lost his mind. And he got Cat right next to him. Cat just lost his mind to coronavirus. Like, it's you you seeing these people for, for what they really are in the middle of all this when sports is not going on. So I, I hope that you know, when they do come back, it's a more genuine love like it is up here from people who see these people on TV and, and all that stuff. And, and they allow these people to keep growing. And honestly, these are the people that need to be higher up. You know, we got to take their words and let them lead us in their, in their respects to, you know, the promised land. Now you're right. You know, I think when sports does come back, it's it's going. It can't be the same. You know, it it can't it can't be the the same structure the way that we have it today. Where, for instance, we talk about the NFL and there's so much uh, uh, talk between you know helping the players and helping the owners, and there's such a difference in that. But it really breaks down to the same thing that everybody are facing today. It comes down to the race. You know, it comes down. Exactly. To the organization, the organizational structure, it almost can't exist anymore because people are tired of it. People are tired of having to, to negotiate what's really human rights Fair. almost when people are putting their right. life and health on the line to get compensated right. for it. But, you know, it has to change in somewhere in that form too. Yeah, and you see it in baseball the most. Right now they're trying to get the players to take 70% uh, off of their contracts when owners are, they got billions of dollars, they got millions of dollars. It's like, why don't y'all take some of that money? Y'all not even trying to touch theirs. So like, it's it's always the higher ups trying to take advantage of the people that's below them or that work for them or that they, they don't view as the same as them. And it's, it's the same in sports. I mean, I think sports teach you so much about life in every regard that you can't, you can't, treat people this way right it has to be fair my son it has to be fair like wherever you are else nothing will ever get accomplished every year is going to be a new complaint every every two years is going to be something new that's that we could have been hashed this out but it's always they always trying to find a way to keep the people that's up top up top keep the people that's below them below them and that's not that's not how it should be man i think that that's that's the biggest thing that's wrong with the world and just that mindset of how things work. We, why can't we be equals? Why can't, I think that, you know, we're seeing more of the shift towards that, you know, with the more than the athlete thing. And, you know, hopefully that continues. And I think that as bad as things are right now, like I said, man, I think that it's, it's going to start shifting that way. Cause I'm starting to see it when I watch these videos and see all these people coming together, man, I think that, Change is, is on the way, hopefully sooner than later, but I'm not saying it's a year from now, but I'm, it's, it's, it's down there somewhere because it's, it's only going to get worse until it, it gets right. So. You're absolutely right. It doesn't get better until it gets its absolute worst. I mean, we see it in both of our lives. You went through something where it, you, ne you couldn't even prepare for it, man. Like, even with the stuff going on today, we couldn't prepare for that. We couldn't. We didn't know that. The, the, the result of what happened to be such a, 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 a crazy comeback and a crazy reaction that people are, are yeah. fed up, man. And when, like we said, we talked about earlier, when you hit that bottom, you know, and you, and you hit the lowest of the low points where it is no lower than that. The only thing you can do and is the greatest, greatest thing human beings have is that bounce back where it's like, okay, I'm not going anywhere but up. That perseverance, where it's like I, I'm not taking this no more, and it's and it's going to change. The revolution is televised; it is seen, and we're seeing the results from it today. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, bro! Absolutely. So before we before we get, you know, too deep, you know, we, and we got to end at some point. 
it's been good. First of all, it's been great coming on the podcast, man. We really, we really love that perspective that you have on not only how athletes can affect what's going on today, but also to the point of what you went through in your personal life and how you went through the bottom, you went through the ups and downs, you went through the scrutiny. But to find that meteoric rise and to find a way to get through that is what it's all about. And it even relates today, man. And we appreciate you coming through to the to the podcast. I appreciate you having me, man. Now the last thing we're gonna do, do man, the sometime, last man. thing, the last thing we gotta do, we end off every time with the three things you would advise people to to take on that you tried that may be uncommon that they should try for themselves. What are three things that people should step out of their comfort zone with that you tried yourself or that you heard about that people should try? They're like regular things, like life things? Life things. This is about anything. life. Anything. It could be anything. Uh, okay, cool. Um, for me, um, I went more plant-based. I would say that. I've been okay. feeling better. I've been looking better. Uh, minus quarantine. Yeah. Um, I've been taking cold showers. Cold so, showers? Listen, listen. One cold shower every like two, three days. Just because, listen to this, listen to this. It sounds crazy. I was, I'm the same way. It is. But, uh, I watched this, I watched this video on, uh, I think it was on, on Netflix or something, but um, it's like, you know how when they douse that, that cold water on your back and you, <gasps> you lose your breath? Yeah. So it's like, you turn on a cold shower, you walk in there, the object is to not lose your breath, right? The object is to control your breathing. So now <laughs> that study says, once you learn to do that, your stress levels go all the way down. Your health goes all the way up. It's like a reset for your body every time you do it. And um, you can learn to, you know, if you got anger management and stuff, like people learn to, to channel that stuff. And it's healed a lot of people. It's like people with cancer low key have been in remission because of it, because it's like it's such a shock to your body. But um, wow, that's one thing. showers. Like I'm talking cold, like <laughs> like turn that thing like this. But like ice tub cold after a practice. Cold, cold, but control your breathing. I'm telling you, like you'll mm -hmm. feel like a new person after the first one. Okay. Then um uh, I say the last one, number three. Mm. Uh shoot. Just uh damn. I started cooking. I started cooking. cooking. I started cooking. Oh, I'm not, I'm not a big no. cooker. You know, you know, my mom, my mom used to be cooking. So like, oh, she throw down. She throw down. So like, I don't, I never really knew how to cook. Like, I knew how to make some of the stuff that she made. But like, right. to open the world up and start cooking, you, hey, man, what, 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 what you making before we end? What you, what you cooking up, man? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm more plant based. So I've been cooking a lot of okay. pastas and stuff. So I had mm -hmm. last night. I made a creamy pasta with mushrooms. You know, some layoffs and that stuff. And, and, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't go too crazy. I ain't, I ain't an expert. In that. Yeah, you know I mean? I'm still learning. So, I, mean, I took up cooking just to do something new, just to do like, you know, what I mean, I really want to start like getting into art and stuff like that. But um, I say that that's I mean, that's a small step. That's something that you know, I just wanted to step outside of my box and start to learn. And mm -hmm. you can never learn too much. So. Hey, Those three man. things for sure, man. Start. I'm telling you, cold showers actually work. Man. Oh my goodness, we done. Hey, that's a legendary. That's a legendary three drops right there. That's some jewels, right? Like we said, people, we with a legendary person right here, Devars Daniels, a legend in his own right. This man is is something else, man. I'm telling you, he talks about <laughs> cold showers, right? He talk cold about showers. eating plant based. And last but not least, man, you got to get in that kitchen and start cooking up some meat. Got to. Because as a man, they don't expect you to do that. I'm a man. <laughs> hey, as a black man, they don't expect you to do a lot of things. I got no man. limits. No limits. No limits to bars, man. And like I said, on the other hand, he, he's, he's a man of many talents. Everybody may know him as the football superstar. But, hey, after this podcast, we have the deeper connection. I've, I've gained deeper perspective. And things I need to try for myself. I'm about to hop in the cold shower after this. Yeah, bro. Do it. <laughs> well, Do it, bro. I appreciate you, man. The Other Hand Podcast, we're bringing you the most genuine, uncommon stories from your favorite sports heroes, your sports figures, and more, many more people involved in the sports arena. Devar's Daniels, where can we find you at? 
Uh, y'all can find me on Instagram. I'm not on there too much. I post a lot of stories, though. Uh, TDF underscore baby. Uh, sincerely, too, on Twitter. Um, that's about it, man. I'm a, I'm a low-key dude. Don't, don't try to talk to me. <laughs> hey, that's right, man. Hey, follow my guy, DeVars Daniels, to the TDF master, the guy himself. He's going to be in Canada football for, for a long time to come. Hopefully he comes to the NFL and blesses us with his talents, which I got to keep up with this, man. On the other hand, he's uncommon, and we learned three things that he can do to, hey, enhance your life. Enhance your life. So thanks again, brother, and we out. Another episode. On the other hand, we feeling like the best. Notre Dame, Florida, CBS. No one can check us because we always playing chess. If you always think you're right today, we're going to take you left.